Welcome to the Tesla Power Podcast. This is the unofficial Tesla Energy community where we explore solar panels, solar roof, and power wall for your home. I'm Aaron Brady. Today, let's talk about part numbers for Tesla solar glass roof products. Let's talk about new Tesla solar glass roof installation photos and an additional surprise. Let's talk about our Tesla solar glass roof install timeline. And let's talk about the update we just got from United Illuminating for our witness test failure. Let's do it. So we've got some questions and they are some good ones. If you have a question of your own or maybe some information for another community member, you can comment below. You can call 203-816-5150 or you can email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. Let's take a look at the first comment. We have Randy Hawkins. He has ordered uh, his Tesla solar glass roof. He's got a question. Quote, Aaron, thanks for the information about the textured metal panels. I'll have a solar glass roof installed in the next month or so by Tesla. Can you please provide me with the part numbers so that when I communicate with my Tesla representative, I can ensure that these textured metal panels will be here and available as an option, end quote. Randy, thank you very much for your question. As you know, I got my roof before the new textured metal tile was available. So I don't have photos of the product labels and therefore I don't have the part numbers. Uh, you might have seen the response from Frosty GT. Uh, he chimed in to assure you that the textured metal tiles will be included with your install. I'm with you though. I don't think that anything should be left to chance. And if you have been following Paul Edgman at all uh, for his install uh, that's happening in Washington state, you'll see that Tesla went a different direction than his local zoning regulations will allow. And that's put his installation on deep freeze while Tesla tries to work out uh, the details with the utility. Now it would have been way better if Paul had been able to head this off by making sure Tesla was putting in the approved gateway rather than the not yet approved meter mounted uh, meter mounted transfer switch. And you know what? That's exactly what this community is all about. So I'll call on viewers to provide a, a photo of that QR code and part number label on the box containing the textured metal tiles. Um, I'll include them in a parts list. I'll make a link in the main channel notes for, uh, for posterity. So I've kicked this off. Uh, I've got the labels of the solar glass tiles, the glass, uh, tiles without solar, the metal flashing, the underlayment, and the other materials we had on site for our, ins our install back in March. If you have the textured metal tiles on site and you can get a snap of that QR code and part number label, email it in to teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com so I can include it in the parts list as well. Uh, Frosty GT, of course, also goes on. Um, he didn't just respond to Randy, but he had some additional detail to add. Quote, they will be included in your install. I have 11.4 kilowatt, two power wall plus version three glass tile solar roof. The edge tiles will be textured metal and you can't tell the difference. The roof is beautiful. I wish I could post pics here. I may try sending pics to TPP and I'm still waiting for my PTO, which Tesla is holding up 60, 120 days for lack of personnel, so I'm told, end quote. So Frosty GT did send those photos of his installation uh, on that solar glass roof, and I am proud to feature them here. Uh, what I can show you, what I thought was particularly cool. So here's the uh, super wide shot if I take it full screen. And then uh, I've also got another wide shot here. So without the distortions, just a little bit more, more squared up. But this is what's super interesting. Love that little circular bit on the far left. Dishy McDish face. Dude, how did you get both the solar glass roof and Starlink? I mean, I would expect that if you qualify for Starlink public beta, you're not anywhere near a city. But I'd also expect that if you're nowhere near a city, Tesla wouldn't be offering the solar glass roof in your area. So, so what's up? Uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I got to say, you've got the best situation for any sort of grid down situation. Like when we lose power here, we often lose internet. You know, it, it's pretty disappointing. You know, we've got battery backup, but no data to keep us connected. 
4G isn't nothing, so thank goodness for that. But if the tower's too close, even that goes down because of the power outage. So honestly, the creative director wife and I would be more interested in Starlink as a home service than the much rumored Tesla HVAC system. I mean, think about it. It would be really nice to have Starlink offered as a part of a Tesla home services bundle in addition to solar, battery, and someday HVAC. I don't know. Topic for an upcoming video, I think. And then our last question. It comes from Jerome King, who commented on episode 18 in regards to our installation timeline. Quote, great podcast. Keep up the good work of informing people and providing a forum for users to ask questions. Could you provide dates for your solar roof timeline? I know it will differ from project to project and state to state, but it would provide a good sense as to what to expect. I was surprised to hear your utility company has still not approved your net metering, but you've been using your solar roof for several months, right? So what are all the roadblocks before getting everything working? Thanks, end quote. Jerome, thank you for the question. Let's dive in. So let me pull up the uh, detailed notes. Uh, these are the detailed notes that I took during uh, our solar glass roof install. It's no worth noting that I don't consider our project complete since you correctly point out that we still don't have our witness test complete and therefore we aren't getting credit for net metering. I think you'd agree that net metering is a pretty big deal, it needs to be in place in order for us to see the full value of this installation. So not complete until then, but let's start from the very beginning. So we started, you know, just like everybody else, we were placing our order online. I, I would say this is scary easy. Like gambling might be the only other way to spend so much money so quickly. It was certainly the easiest part of the process. That's for sure. Now, we had initially placed our order in May of 2019 and Tesla ended up canceling our order a year later when we weren't ready to move forward with the purchase. So you might remember, I mean, this was right in the height of the lockdown. Things were pretty uncertain. But later that summer, after we lost power for five days, the creative director wife and I decided that this needed to happen. So we placed our order again in August of 2020 and received an installation date for March 2021. As we got closer we were given the following timeline. Um, let me take this full screen. This is the um, month view of the calendar. And I'll zoom in as we go uh, through more of this. But uh, you'll see that we have two different timelines. So the one that I'm going to highlight first is how they saw the timeline going through. Uh, um, or you know, coming to fruition. So let's zoom in a little bit and look at one week at a time. So March 24th was going to be the walkthrough. March 25th, the dumpster was to arrive and the crew was to begin working. March 29th, roofing begins. Then on the following week, March 30th, well, you'd see more work on the 29th. And then on March 30th, project complete. Now, they later gave us an update that this part of the work would only be the roof removal and the underlayment installation. Uh, they said that the solar glass roof work wouldn't begin until April 12th and then end on the 14th with everything installed. So that would give us, you know, this whole week off and then that following week, the Monday and Wednesday would, would be the end of uh, work. So that's the expectations they set. This is not how it went down. Here's what really happened. So let's take this full screen again. I want to go back to the month view. And here we'll show how it really went down. So on the 24th, if we zoom back in, the 24th, the port johns arrived uh, at 11 a.m. at the dumpster came at 2 p.m. Um, and then at uh, 4 p.m. we finally had the, uh, the walkthrough. On March 25th, uh, uh, they started the Tesla roof removal and the underlayment install. That all started at 9 a.m. 
On March 26th, it rained out. So no work happened at all. On March 27th, they came back. That was the Saturday. They did roof removal and underlayment um, until about 5.30 p.m. that day. They took March 28th, that Sunday off. And then on March 29th, the roof removal and underlayment installation finally uh, completed. Now, this left us with a stark white roof with Tesla logos all over it. It's pretty cool. I've got a couple of photos I want to share with you guys um, here. Let me just get... So this is the uh, front of the house. And then, of course, the back of the house. You can see the... Um, bits where they can tether themselves to the roof for safety in that first shot and of course i've got a little video here this is the uh, addition uh, looking out one of the back windows you can see the um, silver aluminum flashing with the underlayment laid over it of course with the um, black chimney cap on top of that and then later they would come back with the black anodized uh, metal flashing. So, um, not too bad looking. It definitely got a lot of attention. Of course, there was a lot more work to do. So let's go back to that calendar shot. Um, if we look at the month view here, you can see that that's really only getting us through the first week of work. So after they finished that, uh, um, roof removal and underlayment install install. We basically had two weeks off. I will call it a week and a half to be generous, but you can see they picked up the dumpster on the following Thursday and delivered some materials, um, on Friday. And then the real work began the week after that. So let's zoom into this week, April 12th, the crew begins the solar glass roof install. April 13th, the crew continues. April 14th, the crew completes the roof install and the electrical team gets started installing the power walls, the gateway, the inverters, and the net meter. You can see all of that happening later in the day here. On April 15th, the electrical team gets in really early, 5.30 a.m. They do more work on the meter and gateway outside the house. They take Friday off. And then on Saturday, the 17th, the electrical crew completes installation and commissions the system. This is the key date right here. When they commissioned my system, that was the first time that I was able to see um, power flow through the app. I was able to control the different devices. Um, they were able to do a grid down test to make sure that the battery backup kicked in. Um, I would say that this is the real key date, the date that they complete installation and they commission the system. It doesn't mean I have permission to operate. It doesn't mean that uh, I have permission from Tesla to use the products uh, because of course I haven't paid for the um, paid for the roof at this point. So my wife, uh, the creative director wife and I haven't uh, yet sent in the check. We haven't even agreed on the final details of the purchase at this point. That's how a little out of order all of this gets. But <clears throat> let's take a look at that next week. Uh, so you can see on April 20th, the materials are picked up from the front of our house. And then on the 22nd, we got to scooch way down here, way at the end of the day, the porta johns are picked up finally. And uh, from then we have to wait until, let's go back to the month view. So there's the porta johns there. We have to wait until May 10th before the town inspects our installation. Now the ins uh, inspection goes well and United Illuminating is there three days later on the 13th to install our new smart, uh, smart meter. After that, we have exactly two weeks. On May 27th, we finally get pricing sorted from Tesla uh, and we send in our payment and we can turn the system on. Dun, dun, dun. Super exciting stuff. But even though we're able to turn that system on, it's not until July 16th that we finally get our witness test with United Illuminating for permission to operate. Of course, we fail that test. Um, now, 
you might remember we failed that test because we were over the export capacity limit of 20 kilowatts by half a kilowatt. Ugh, painful. And that brings us to today. You know, for those of you keeping score at home, that's three and a half weeks for the work to be done for the core system um, installation. Uh, that was one week for the removal and for the installation, the underlayment. They were off about a week and a half. And then there was one week to install the solar glass roof and the electrical components. Now for the last two milestones, let's go back to the calendar. You can see that it's nine weeks. So if we go from the year view, it's nine weeks from the 24th where they begin work until the 27th of May when we can finally turn the system on. And even today, we're 24 weeks in without the project being completed. I mean, that's almost six months. Now, I'm sure there are many that have had a faster rollout and some that have languished longer. I mean, I can't vouch for how typical this is either. I mean, especially since they changed the architecture right after our project, you know, with the goal of simplifying things. Now, <laughs> Paul Edgman is the poster boy for how it's not ever that simple. So let's hear from you, right? How did your install go? How did it compare with the way they set expectations ahead of time? Now, these are the kinds of details that are really helpful for those that are looking to get the solar glass roof installed in their own homes. So we don't have a ton of news, so we're gonna go ahead and breeze on past that part and get to the update from United Illuminating right after this. Last Monday, we received an update from United Illuminating on our application for permission to operate. It's called PTO. Uh, has a lot of red text in it. Basically, they used the pre-installation application and modified only in the inverter uh, capacities. None of the other details were updated. They also haven't updated any of the drawings, drawings to reflect the final installed hardware. Remember, we added a power wall between the roof removal and the power wall installation. So this probably means another couple of months before the application is reviewed again and probably means we won't get PTO until much later this year. Since we are not getting net metering credit during that period, I've reverted our system back to full self-powered. The whole goal is to at least reduce the amount we're pulling from the grid while we wait. Um, there's nothing we can really do about the payback period though. It's going to stretch that period out a year or so. Pretty disappointing, you know, from a financial point of view. So we'll go through the financials again at one year just to see how far off we actually are. And that is episode 21 of the Tesla Power Podcast. I look forward to hearing from more of you. The input, the participation has really been great. Thank you. I'm Aaron Brady, and let's do this again on the next video.